you welcome to another edition of the market review where we bring you key developments in the financial and capital market as it impacts the economy today we'll be looking at inflation inflation in nigeria has been rising currently it's uh, real core inflation is over 18 percent while food inflation is over 22 percent showing very serious socioeconomic concerns for nigeria but what are the implications for the financial market today we'll be discussing with Mr. Eboyodeji, Head Retail Investment at Chapel Hill Denham. Nice to have you once again, Mr. Boyodeji. Yeah, good morning and thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Now, in the last Monetary Policy Committee meeting of the Central Bank, the Governor, Mr. Godwin Mefele, emphasized the importance of fiscal and monetary policy coordination to address issues like local production, which he believed, if massively embarked on, can help to address the rising tide of inflation. What's your take on this? Because like you've seen, it's rising and definitely it's having its impact on purchasing power parity amongst others. Okay, thank you very much. And it's, uh, it's really a very valid point that the uh, CBN governor or the MPC committee has made. Uh, because there needs to be a synergy. So what we're talking about here is the fiscal authorities, they, their major responsibility is to create the enable environment, is to uh, create policies that would enhance or will attract or provide confidence for investment. While the monetary policy uh, to also check some of the, the variables that in terms of the lending rates, in terms of the uh, they need to also check uh, stability in, in terms of uh, the effect stability. So there needs to be the, the synergy. So if the role, if the CBN is trying to reduce money in circulation, uh, the fiscal authority needs to know that they need to also see how, how can they curtail spending. So you, you would see that if uh, the federal government or the fiscal authorities are trying to increase the spending in the economy, the monetary authority, on the other hand, needs to know uh, how to manage such those uh, manage the liquidity such that it doesn't lead to inflation, so that it doesn't have direct impact on a money supply. So I feel that there needs to be a synergy. And when we talk, we're also talking about the impact in terms of production. We look at. Um, what the monetary authority, they are limited and what they've done, they've, there are a lot of initiatives in terms of intervention that they've taken. They've almost, almost uh, taken over the role of the fiscal authorities, but there's a limit to how much of that can achieve. When you check even most of the, the total intervention fund is still less than maybe less, let's put up about 5% of our GDP. So it means that the fiscal authorities, which when you look at from their own hand have revenue constraints. So how do they, what can they do is to create that environment to attract both domestic and foreign direct investments into the country so that um, they can produce and generate. And you would see that would, once production also increase, there's also that tendency that there would be a reduction in the, uh, in the prices of goods and service because uh, it will be driven by demand and supply. Yeah, yeah, I mean, very clear. The alignment is important to attract investments and focus on robust production. Now, let's look at the implications of this on the financial and capital market. Uh, let's look at the various layers of the market. How is this rising inflation impacting the financial uh, market? Okay, thanks. If we look at based on the, the definition of inflation, it's the consistent or persistent rise in the prices of goods and services. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it from the capital market perspective and, and also from the investor's perspective, for the investor, once inflation begins to increase or begin to rise, then it calls for concern because the purchasing power is being eroded um, gradually. So you need to know what do you need to cover up. So for the investor, when they are going looking for, they will begin to look for investment that can help, if not meet that gap, they will look for help um, for investment that can bridge that gap, reduce the negative real return. Because if you are trying to save to purchase something and the rate at which that product is increasing is higher than the rate at which you are saving and the interest you are getting, 
Mm. It means at the end of the day, you may never be able to achieve um, achieve or purchase that particular item. Mm. So it's important. So once you begin to see high inflation rates, it calls currently because of the high inflation, there's been, um, I would say, increase in the, um, the interest for investment. So uh, you see investors looking for the various form of investment. So when you are talking about the financial market, you see for those that just leave their fund idle in their savings or current account without any interest. Now they are asking questions and they are looking for investment, which will now be based on their risk appetite. So you begin to see investors asking for the rate for treasury bills. Yes, it was almost at zero level last year. So, but you know, for the borrower now, the rate at which they borrow because investors are looking for higher interest rates. So the rate at which they will also want to, they, they will be raising funds would also be high, which will impact on finance costs. And for equities markets, you see a lot of investors because of the potential to hand double digits return in form of capital appreciation and dividend yield, which is based on the dividend paid. So that would also influence and increase the interest of investors uh, around the investment once you begin to see high inflation rates. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, Dr. Doin Salami, the chairman of the Presidential Economic Advisory Committee uh, four years ago, when our inflation was also rising like this, I mean, as at that time it was 17%, he said, when it reaches 17%, that's a threshold where inflation directly affects or reduces output in the country. How we are in this phase managing growth, addressing inflation. What do you expect from the next MPC meeting? The central bank has also also been focusing on inflation. Um, this particular quote from the cerebral economist: How does this play out in state of our economy and also influencing decisions for monetary policy makers? Yes, I think this comment is very hard uh, because once prices of Input begin increase significantly. It means output will also reduce. And from the uh, consumer's perspective, when also prices have increased, what you demand for will also reduce. So there's a limit when inflation begins to get to a level. It it will reduce the amount of goods that will be ordered. Then it will also have implication on what will be produced because of the cost of production. So. It's really hard and is, is spot on on that. So I think when you look at it from the MPC perspective, they, they know beyond, um, based on the, their last comment is that inflation rate is more of cost push. So uh, is more of, um, uh, I would say when you look at like food inflation, when you put, you look at in terms of the, uh, the uh, Structural bottlenecks, you can also look at it, the insecurity that is also happening and the, um, the initial uh, closure of the border. So that's also impacted on the cost of goods. And you look at also at international level, you also discover that uh, prices of, um, of commodities were also, have also increased. So that would also impact on domestic prices. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, why there's also a measure of um, um, demand pool, but it's mostly cost push. Yes, you have um, cost, pu uh, cost push inflation. So it's outside the purview, uh, so I have outside the purview of the, the CBM, but where we would see major impacts, let's say um, impact on inflation from the monetary angle is if there's an increase in money supply sig uh, significantly, Yes, um, the government have tried to, they have tried, they've emphasized that they would reduce the ways and means for this year. So we're hoping if that can also be kept uh, within ban, so that will not have much impact in terms of money supply, which would fuel inflation. But when you are talking about uh, the inflation, we expect that uh, when you look at it in terms of the half loop, uh, we're expecting that uh, there will be a minor review in electricity tariff in June. And there may be a, a major um, a major review next day, which is almost, almost every two years. So when you look at that impact, also for PMS, uh, there's still that back and forth in terms of the subsidy payment. Mm -hmm. But what the way we would also look at it based on the NMPC letter, if we are 
they are not removing. It means that what is also coming in terms of expenditure is we are also paying for it indirectly before uh, FAC allocation is distributed. So that would also impact on the costs uh, or would be major pressure points on inflation rates. Yeah. And, and, and finally, let's look at this year. I mean, do you think it's inflation would taper at a point in 2021, just in 30 seconds? Yes, I think um, on a base effect uh, basis, uh, we expect that from the second half, it should reduce. But there are still a lot of um, downside risks to inflation. So which will be a scenario is if we see a major hike in, um, we see the minor review for electricity, it has a direct impact. And also if subsidy payment is also removed, then you would also see that um, that impact, direct impact on energy prices, which would impact on inflation. So in essence, subsidy uh, removal or whatever happens within it and the electricity tariff will be very critical in second half on the impact on uh, inflation. Yes, inflation, yes. Yeah. yes. They both affect energy prices. Okay. Prices, okay. And finally, what's the outlook in terms of the next one minute? Yes, say? our outlook, we're expecting that inflation rates um, to come in at um, like 18.7 percent for the month of April, and uh, we and for the economy, we feel that yes, we may still be uh, stay within the positive growth region, but uh, we're always looking beyond when do we begin to go beyond the population growth rate so that the growth is inclusive. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Mr. Ebuayodeji, Head Retail Investment, Chapel Hill, Denham for this very incisive conversation around inflation and the implications for the Nigerian financial market. We hope to have you to discuss further developments in the Nigerian financial capital market in subsequent editions. Thank you once again for the time. Thanks for always having me. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, inflation is very critical. You must keep watching it. And you can join our website, www.prosharenergy.com. Get to the website, click on the search by inflation, you'll see all our latest articles and reports around inflation till we come your way again. Please stay safe this period. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.